Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 New York Latino Film Festival. My name is Maria Akay, and I am this year's lead programmer. I'm very excited to introduce this panel presented by NBC Universal, one of the festival's leading sponsors. Thanks to the support of NBC Universal, we're able to present this panel highlighting Latinx talent. I'd like to now introduce our moderator, Vanessa Morales, who is the SAG-AFTRA Latino National Committee Vice Chair. Together with the committee, she advocates for greater Latino representation in Hollywood. Hi, Vanessa. Hello, bienvenidos, and welcome to Portraying Authentic Latinx Experiences on Screen. Um, I'm Vanessa Morales. I am SAG-AFTRA's National Latino Committee Co-Chair. And as we've mentioned, we are a committee built to advocate for greater Latino representation in Hollywood. And I am so excited to speak to all of our panelists today. So without further ado, it's a great pleasure to introduce to you our panel made up of Latinos series regulars. And uh, they are Luis Gerardo Mendez and Gabriela Cartol, who are both currently starring in the resort. And we also have Marian Lee Tejada, who is also starring in One of Us is Lying. So we're gonna just get right into it. Um, we can start with either Luis or Gabriela. Because of the nature of the show, I would like to hear from either one of you. Tell us what the show is about. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Um, you wanna start, Gabby, or should I go for it? You go, you go. Um, what the show is about, uh, that's a really tricky question about the resort. I think that the resort is the story about these two, um, this, this couple from the US uh, in a very bad crisis in their marriage. And they're trying to save their marriage and they decide to go to this resort in Mexico, in the Mayan Riviera to try to, you know, light the sparks again. Uh, so it's a love story. It starts as, as a love story, but then it okay. shifts into a completely different thing. When they found a phone in the jungle uh, that belonged to a kid that went missing in that place 15 years ago. Okay, so, Luis, we don't have to give out all those details because we yeah. definitely want them to check out the show yeah. on Peacock. But I asked you because it has a lot to do with time travel, then there's a love story, and a pretty cool, thrilling, like fast-paced mystery. So that's why I asked what, it's It's kind of several genres in I think rolled up into the, one. The, the, good, the, the cool thing about the resort is like, it's really hard to define. That's the, yeah. that yeah. thing that you just said, that you just mm -hmm. read, is the way they try to <laughs> simplify what the show is about. But it's, it's so yeah. complex because it's shifting all the time, you know? Like, And it I is. think that's one of the reasons uh, Gabriela and myself and all the cast jumped in because uh, it's really rare to read something like that uh, for television. And especially with Latin characters, you know, like very specific Latin characters, as as you said, uh, serious regulars, no? So yeah. it's, it's um, yeah, I, I think uh, people are gonna enjoy it and it's definitely something pretty unique. Yes, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And the way it moves is just, you know, it's one of those shows that you're, you just wanna binge and you just wanna keep watching and watching. You're like, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? <laughs> so, yeah. um, I mean, great great job to your showrunner, um, Andy Ciara, because it's, it's, it's definitely um, really exciting and I can't wait to see what season two is gonna bring. Um, and with that said, that was the resort and today we're also speaking to Marianne Lee Tejada. So um, with this one, I just want you to give me like a quick synopsis to tell um, our audience members what your show is about, One of Us is Lying. Uh, yeah, so One of Us is Lying is a murder mystery about five students that walk into detention in season one and one of them doesn't make it out alive and then it's about who did it from these other four suspects and why um they have motive to have done this and then the whole series unfolds and we kind of find out what the secrets are and what tied them together but it also i love about one of us that it starts like the the five students or the four students that remain kind of walk into detention not knowing too much about one another or not being close and then these beautiful friendships 
and uh, romances unfold as the show progresses. And I think that's like one of the favorite themes, at least for me that I like seeing in a show, it's like relationships unfold. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's your suspense about like who did it and how it happened. So um, it's, it's very bingeable. So One of Us is Lying is actually based off of a young adult thriller. It's a New York Times bestseller. So it already brought with it, it's it's already, you know, it's fan base. It already had a fan base. So it's a pretty cool um, project to be a part of. Uh, did you have homework to do? Because I know it's kind of like a cross between like The Breakfast Club, a little bit darker, and maybe like a, a Gossip Girl, or maybe like a Pretty Little Liars. That's accurate. And yeah, I think that as an actor, when you have a book, um, especially Karen McManus's novel, um, as a base to uh, research and kind of dive into is always a big gift because you don't get it in every project. And I think that Karen uh, wrote these characters that are wise beyond their years and with so much depth. Um, and so for me, it was kind of like having a handbook of my character's thoughts and everyone mm -hmm. else's. And I still like, even we just um, finished season two, filming season two, and even still, I think there's elements to the book that I can go back and, and revisit to kind of fill myself up to play Bronwyn um, this second time around. Oh, wow. That is a real gift. That's very nice. Yeah. Um, so growing up, I was born in New York to Colombian parents. So as a kid, you know, the representation that the representation that I had on screen was watching telenovelas with my mother and uh, Plazo Sesamo. <laughs> so we had Luisa Maria on Sesame Street. So it's um, it's really exciting to, to see all these different types of characters um, with a lot of depth, depth, with a lot of depth. <laughs> la, 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 la. Uh -huh. And um, they're all multidimensional. So, uh, for instance, with the resort, the dialogue between Luna and Balthazar is, is top notch. It's pretty awesome. So I was curious if there was, um, if there was a good amount of improv or did um, Luis and uh, Gabriela, did you guys collaborate with the writer's room? How did, how did that work? Um, we did have a lot of freedom. There was a script, a really well uh, written script already by Manuel Alcala and um, Mara as well. And, um, but, all, but yeah, Luis Carlos and I also had these conversations every time like this, if, does, if it doesn't sound natural, if it doesn't sound like it comes from the heart, like what they would say or what, it was really important to us. And Luis Gerardo would also say to me, like, doesn't that sound strange to you? Yeah, let's let's try and figure out another thing. And then we would go to Andy and Manuel and would say, hey, we want to say this in this way because we, we feel it like it's more authentic the way the way these guys talk. And they they would give us freedom for that. And they were in, open in, to it. That's great. Yes, of course, of course, because you know, there is a there is a time when you need to, as a writer, I think you need. I mean, I'm not a writer, but but that's what I think. <laughs> uh, you need to let the the uh, the words just now transform themselves, and that's what the actors does, right? Like we get it, and then we transform it. We put it into the body. We put it into the. We put it in a soul as well, and sometimes mm -hmm. you need that as well. Uh, the collaboration with the actors. Um, not that we are writers, but yes, we, we are like the ones that we're going to transform the words into the body. Yeah, because those scenes between Luna and Baltasar were, were my favorite. They were, they were great. So good job, guys. Um, what about, what about with uh, your character, Mariani? Did you collaborate? Well, I know you had, you had the book as this amazing uh, gift. Did you... Did you at all collaborate with the writers in terms of shaping or molding your character? Um, not from the writer's room point, but I think that we were entrusted these characters because we kind of embodied um, 
them just naturally it's kind of insane how like looking back at the casting process and like meeting everyone you're like oh my god no wonder why this person's playing this role um I think we I have like a really funny example of like season one we had to do like two weeks of quarantine in New Zealand um before we could start filming and like uh, you know mm -hmm. costume fittings and all that and then we got the scripts at that point and we were kind of reading, like reading it on my own. I'm like, hmm, I wonder how this is going to work. And then the first table read, when everyone just taps into it, it just comes alive. And I think that a lot of that was kind of done just automatically by the cast of this. And so like when we get to film this show, it almost it almost like rolls out of your tongue what you're saying, because it makes so much sense. Um, but there are instances where, where, like Gabriela was saying, some things you could ground a little more or stay in a more natural way to yourself and it helps the character. And I think we had plenty of freedom uh, with that, uh, with our writers and, and showrunners mm -hmm. um, in the last few years, which is, is pretty dope. That's awesome. And I'm going to I'm going to stay with you here now. So tell me maybe a little bit of how uh, Bronwyn's character, the character that you play is named Bronwyn. Um, are there any similarities between Marianne Lee and Bronwyn? One hundred percent. Yeah, um, I was a really good student uh, myself. I don't think I was as passionate as uh, about academics as Bronwyn was. Um, but I think also in the way in which I have heart for the things that matter to me, she is very similar in that way. And I think the greatest difference um, with us is that Bronwyn is the eldest child of the Rojas family and I'm the youngest of my family. So for me, tapping into that like protective sort of big sister mode um, whom I get to share that relationship with Melissa Collazo, who's an amazing uh, Latina actress as well. Where is uh, she? <laughs> I know. I was I was literally texting her. <laughs> I was like, Mel, where are you? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was such a gift to get to do it with her, and that was probably the greatest difference that I had uh, in playing Bronwyn. And um, yeah, but there's a, there's a lot of oddly a lot of similarities. I think in the way we operate it might be different like if you see my character she's quite nerdy and whatnot and I think I'm a little bit more sassy um but it's so mm -hmm. fun to like bring but that she, she has the nice she has the nice arc that she experiences so oh my so god she, yeah especially she season two up. I'm excited I'm excited cool. for season two as well because we see more of that multi-dimensional mm -hmm. person in in every character in the show cool. so now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, drop the same question to Luis and Gabriela um, we can start with Gabriela. Uh, tell me a little bit about your character and maybe ways in which you're similar or maybe you're not at all Luna, but I thought that she was, she's just such an awesome, like multi-dimensional character. And, yeah. you know, it's not just like the concierge who just checks people in. Yeah. No, she's, she's a real person. She parties, yeah. she drinks, she's, yeah. she's funny. So yeah. that's <laughs> What you just said, Vanessa, that's the reason why I do believe in representation, because um, now I want to play human beings, actual human beings. And I always said that Luna is not defined by what she uh, what she does at work or what. Yeah, what she does, but what she does in life, what her actions are. That's what you know, what's um, that's the direction of Luna. And you can get a hint when you start watching her. Exactly, she's lively. She's um, brave. She's the faster runner. <laughs> um, she's the mother. Right? <laughs> she's the mother. Yes. Uh, she's a friend as well, and she believes in 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 true friendship and loyalty. And uh, she's funny. Um, and I think. The way that I'm similar with Luna is that she's always up, like alive with this energy. I always think mm -hmm. uh, of, of characters in terms of energy. What energy do they, do they have? Uh, do they go up, you know, high? Or, or are they low? Are they inside? And I think mm -hmm. Luna is definitely like high and outside. And uh, she always says what she thinks. 
And uh, I think that's that's one of the reasons why I just straight jumped in as well. I wanted to play her so much because um, it was the actual, it is nothing to do with the chambermaid. Mm -hmm. And is that is that similar to how Gabriela is in real life? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm, usually, <laughs> I'm usually up and lively and with a smile mm. on my face. Um, yeah. Cool. And what about you, Luis? How is uh, your character, Baltasar? similar or not similar to you or not? Uh, before answering that question, I would like to go back of uh, what yeah. Gabby was saying about um, improvisation on set mm -hmm. uh, and, and the dialogue between these two characters, because I, I think there's a massive detail there in terms of representation. Like I, I always say, and I think that um, representation right now is very, it's a very tricky thing because representation is not just having Latin actor, actresses or actors in your show. That's not representation. You know, like representation has to be a specific, you know, and it has to be written a specific, in a specific universe, in a specific context, destroying the archetypes that we've seen, you know? Yes. So but what I'm trying to say with this is like, in a show like The Resort, for example, um, our characters are very specific Mexican characters. My character is a rich kid from Yucatan which is a, a, a very particular state in the south of Mexico. And they have like a very specific accent. It's so specific that I will tell you, I, I never seen an accent like that on TV or movies, even in my own country, you know, like really? and the way, yeah, it's really rare. And the way this happened is because Andy Sierra, the showrunner, had the clarity of being like, okay, I need a Mexican writer in the writer's room who knows this culture very well to write these characters, you know, like it's very common. I've been in thousands of meetings. I have my production company in Mexico and developing projects with all the platforms. And I've seen so many times like, oh yeah, we're just gonna have a Latin, a Latin writer in the room. Um, but yeah, sometimes the Latin writer in the room is Mexican and he needs to write about a woman in Colombia. In Colombia, right. In Colum or the same, or a, a, a female writer, um, from Argentina, writing about a Mexican gay guy, you know, it's like, you have no idea how that works. We are completely different. So the representation has to be a specific, and that comes from the origin of the projects, and that comes from the writing, you know, like, then they're going to cast the most perfect actor or actress for that role. Right. But it comes from the pen, you know? Like, I, I mean, I've been, I've been talking about this for years because... Uh, I think there's there, there's still a lot of uh, road to walk, but I think yeah. uh, like the resort, for example, is like a. I feel very proud of it's this show. It's a stepping stone. It's, yes, it's, it's it's a great job yes. having two series, um, you know, series uh, regulars in such complicated, funny, like just just human. The way that that we're all just human beings. Yeah. As opposed to just the guy who's washing dishes in exactly. the restaurant, yeah, or cleaning. You know, it's it. We and and that's another thing, right? We're Latin America, Latinos, Latinx, whatever you feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. um, we we are all different types of people. Yes, we are all different complexions. We have Afro Latinos. We have light skin Latinos. I have some cousins with light eyes, red hair. It runs the gamut. And um, right now, more than ever, this is this is so important because Latinos as a whole here in the USA, we represent 19 percent of the U.S. population. 19 percent. Right. But a recent study only found that there's only seven point one percent of leading acting roles that are going to Latinos yeah. and 7.7 .7 of overall film acting roles going to Latinos so it's it's not adding up so your experience at the the three of you all of your experience is is so important to share so that you know not not only the Latino actors but all directors all writers all showrunners Hopefully, and maybe they watch this and they pay attention because we're talking about writing for us and we are all so specific and so different, but the same. If, yeah. 
if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. And uh, just to to finish that that point, Vanessa. Sorry, it's uh, when you were asking me about my character. Um, it's I think it's genius the way Andy Sierra, the showrunner, uh, play with played with the stereotypes in this show at the beginning. Because yeah, it's a mystery about these kids that disappeared 15 years ago. And in the pilot, they introduced me and introduced Luna, which by the way, are the Mexicans in the show, like the most obvious suspects, you know? Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because it's a way of playing with the audience. But then you're gonna playing see- Playing with stereotypes, yeah. Yes, but they have nothing to do with that. My character no. is a designer, is a really rich kid who's an incredible designer and he loves, loves detective novels. And Gabby's character, you know, she's a punk from Guadalajara. She's lesbian. She has a son. Like, you know, like it has nothing to do with the representation we've seen before. But it all is also playing with the stereotypes being like, oh, yeah, this is what you think, because this is what we've been showing you for years. And now we're going to show you these characters could be completely different people. And I think that's that's pretty smart. And and, uh, and I love seeing those kind of characters on the screen, especially. Oh, me too. They're so juicy and great to watch. <laughs> yeah. So, Luis in real life, Baltazar. Oh no, I don't know. I mean, I I mean, I like to dress good. You know, when I have my, my a stylist around, I like wearing yeah. like cool clothes. But Baltazar is completely over the top. Like this guy dresses <laughs> yes, like. A prince to the nines and yeah, then some. yeah. and uh, and the accent the accent i need to do with Batasar is is very very tricky probably for, for 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 people in the us they will they are not going to notice it that much but uh, my friends in mexico when they hear me speaking for the first time as this uh -huh. from, from yucatan they were like what the hell like are you going to okay. go with that because it's really over the top but that's the way yeah. they talk you know so uh -huh. you need to be like full commitment with that, with that choice because it's the way they, they speak, you know? So I did, I did notice the different accent, but can you give me just say a regular sentence in Spanish in, in Luis's regular everyday Mexican Spanish? <laughs> and well, I have this, I always have like, when I'm doing an accent, I always have like some phrases that get me into the accent. I mean, I've been, I haven't done it. No, done but, but do, do it without an accent in Spanish. Oh. I, just, I just want to hear your baseline. <laughs> oh, my baseline. Um, pues no estoy hablando raro, yo estoy hablando normal. Luis Gerardo wow, dice, okay. no estoy hablando raro, estoy hablando normal. Okay. Baltasar will be like, no estoy hablando raro, yo estoy hablando normal. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like really, talk. no estoy hablando raro, yo estoy hablando I, I was going to say, you have to watch the show to hear how Baltasar <laughs> sounds, but he just gave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, what about how how was the audition process for the show that you're currently in? We can give this one to uh, Marianne Lee first. How was the audition process? Did you have to audition? Did you get offered the role? Was it a uh, no? I, I had to audition um, maybe like four times. Oh my God. Um, I remember the first one was was a self tape, and I didn't hear back mm -hmm. for like two months. So I had forgotten about this. A like, few months. Uh, one more audition that you wow. send in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I hear back, and I'm like, oh, oh, cool. Yeah. Like, which in, one was that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I go in person, and I meet um, Gail Pillsbury, whom I love, and it's just like a big part of the one of us is lying family now. She's just the sweetest casting director and just like a champion for like actors. And that just makes a huge difference. Um, when you go into a room, it makes you feel comfortable and like yeah. offer what you have um, to offer. And uh, then I went in a couple more times and the final audition was the chemistry read with Cooper Van Grudel. Cooper. Who played Macaulay, yeah. Um, and that was just, I just had so much fun. I think because it just, it, it was meant to be, um, especially that last round, I feel like you had been with the sides for some time at that point. And then you just get to kind of play with this other actor that like ideally you have chemistry with and Cooper and I just hit it off from the get go. Like it was just, the chemistry was there and it's so like, rare and I just I really thank uh, Jennifer Morrison who directed the pilot and was really involved with casting at that point and Gil Pillsbury and the producers because I think that 
they brought just such a good group of people together. We're very similar in like energies. And I don't know, there's like this like mystic almost thing about casting and it just shows on screen. And I think that's that's a big part of why the show, you know, people people resonate with it. And like, it has like a, a an even more solid fan base beyond the book at this point. Um, yeah, yeah. It was yeah a, that's it, pretty it, awesome. It was casting process for me. Casting directors are like magicians. They they need to start getting nominated for the Academy to Academy I agree. Awards. I agree. A lot of credit to them because they deserve. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, and same question uh, for you, Luis. Uh, what was the audition process for you? Did they offer you the role? Did you have the tape? Did you have to see them four or five, six times? Uh, the resort, um, was, uh, one of my first offers in the U S, um, which was incredible <laughs> because nice. I, I mean, I've been, I've been working in Mexico for like, uh, doing movies and shows for 20 years and mm -hmm. I stopped doing auditions like, uh, 10 years ago, probably. So, uh, it's just offers in Mexico, but in the U S I have to say this for people watching this, um, who are actors or aspiring actors, like, before I booked my first role in the U.S., I did 200 auditions with not a single callback. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. After yeah. Being doing big movies and big shows and theater plays in, in Mexico for years, Mexico. Uh, getting just offers in Mexico, in the U.S., it was a completely different experience. It was reading and reading and reading and not hearing a single callback until I took an audition technique class where they show me what was the thing that I was doing wrong. And when I saw that, I corrected that thing and then everything changed. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So so you wouldn't say that, well, wait, let me rephrase that. So would you say that the market in the US is much difficult to break in compared to uh, the Spanish market in Mexico? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, because in Mexico, I know who are the other five or six actors that are always competing for the same roles. Really? Yeah. Or 10 if you want to, you know, but in the U.S., it's, yeah, the 10 Mexicans and the 10 guys from Spain <laughs> and the 10 guys <laughs> and the from, 10 from, the, US, from yes. the Latin scene in L.A., you know, like uh, the 10 Spanish actors, the 10 uh, actors from Chile, you know, like it's it's way bigger. Yeah, and, it's uh, bigger. Bigger talent um, pool. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. I mean, it's it's a place where everyone wants to be to make big movies and big TV shows. So the competition is, is wild. So what was your first? What was your first? Your crossover role? Uh, I think it was Murder Mystery, a movie I did with uh, okay. Jennifer Aniston and mm -hmm. Adam Sandler for Netflix. Yeah, like, yeah, like five years ago. Um, okay. I think that was the one. Yeah. Cool. And how many auditions did you have to do for that one? Oh my God! It was a nightmare. <laughs> A nightmare, like, <laughs> like Marioni was saying, like uh, one uh, self tape, then another tape, then a reading with the director, then another reading with the director, uh, and and then I kind of got, I, I kind of uh, got the job because I know I, I knew some other actor, Rob Schneider, who's friends with Adam Sandler, and he was a huge fan of my show. And I text, I texted Rob Schneider being like, hey, dude, if you see Adam Sandler, just tell him to book me for this movie because <laughs> I, 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 love, I, I love this role. And he was like, dude, you're not going to believe this. I'm jumping in a plane with him because we're doing a company <laughs> tour. So oh, just give me five nice. minutes. And 20 minutes after that, my agents called me like, hey, you got the job. And I was like, no shit, man. I you're like, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you, you always need to do everything or like all your tricks you know like the best self-tape the best auditions but just just call your friends like you need to hustle for that yes. first break because it's really hard yes and I'm, I'm so glad that you said that because there's a lot of people that just sit around waiting for the phone to ring and and oh. like you said two 200 or somewhat auditions and no callbacks and um gosh I don't know how many auditions I've done just this year alone you know it's it's a it's a numbers game and you just keep going and keep going because out of all the no's all you need is one yes <laughs> so uh you just plug away but also I feel like we are we are in in such a great time that we're living in such a great time right now where we can produce our own work with with our cell phones mm -hmm. so 
<clears throat> so that's what I'm currently working on because again, I feel like we also have to help tell our stories and we have so many stories to tell that still haven't been told. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's, that's me going off on a tangent. But that's, but that's, um, Vanessa, that's really exciting. You know, like the thing that you just said, uh, I found that very inspiring, you know, like um, every time I'm on a set, um, I feel like a huge responsibility of the story I'm telling, but as a Mexican actor, working in the US, it's way, way different and, and so much bigger, that sense of responsibility of, of saying like, this is the story I'm gonna tell, this is the kind of characters I'm gonna put in the screen. Uh, I had a teacher um, that always told us, we are the culture makers. You know, like we are the culture makers. We, the actors, like the, the producers, the directors that are actually working, we are defining what culture is going to be in the next year. So we have a huge responsibility of doing it right and, and very, very, being very picky about the roles we choose to represent. Yes, yes, I, I wholeheartedly agree, agree with that. Not being complacent. And then the, the way that, you know, you and, and Gabriela, you know, you weren't, you weren't afraid to, to confront Andy and confront the writers and tell them, you know, this is just not rolling off my tongue. This isn't necessarily how this character would say that. Um, there are far too many actors out there that, that just feel like, you know, they, you know, they're fortunate to get the role and then just, you know, sit back and just whatever they're given, just, just go with it. So it's, it's yeah. And, 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 and I want to say something important as well in that in the cast process because for that, like Luis Gerardo said, you need to find the right actress for the right role for the role. You know, you mm -hmm. need to find the right um, actress. And um, <clears throat> to me, the uh, for me the audition process was heart racking. I mean, nerve racking as well mm -hmm. because I did an audition and then. I forgot as well about it. Then I heard back and they said, it's you. And I was like, really? how, Just... how long in between <laughs> from the first audition to hearing back? Maybe like a month and a half or two months, something okay. like that. And then I was like, really? Just like that? And it was weird to me because here, but you need to do a callback. You need to do, you know, <clears throat> audition after audition. And I would think that in the US because I had this is my first American show so I had no idea congratulations thank you and That's then she killed, killed, killed it she killed it and then I thought <laughs> yeah I was like yay I got it um but then they they wrote another email to me saying oh uh you're actually on callback and I'm sorry if we held back on the decision no. and I was like okay fine what do I need to do we're gonna send you another three more um, scenes and you have to prepare yourself. You have to have a reader in your home. You have to have uh, two devices. You have to have your phone because you're also gonna record yourself. Um, and you have to uh, do it with a Zoom as well. And there's gonna be like the six most important people of the whole um, show. You know, there was Andy, Ben St. Clair, um, I don't remember. I mean, I, I have it's like six people, like the top um, are people from Peacock. Um, so hold, up, hold on a second. I just want to make sure that I'm following. So you had to do this callback and you had to self tape it. And you had, to, was it a live Zoom audition? It was a live Zoom audition. Oh, oh wow. And you had to record it. You're Relaxing. Sure. Yes. <laughs> and, and, you had to, and you had to bring your own reader. Yes. Yes. So I had to have my whole production here in my whole house. Production studio in your house. And uh, but I was like, okay, what what do you want me to prove? I'm I'm up I'm up for it. Like if you want me to dance, I'll dance. If you want me to change my accent, I'll change my accent. So I uh, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna be a challenge for them. I'm not gonna let them just say, Hey, are you the actress? No, I'm gonna say I'm the actress. So yeah. that was my challenge. I had Mindset. like a like uh, yeah, and I was like I like to play, so I'm gonna play. Do you mm -hmm. want the show? I'm gonna give you the show. So I got into that mindset. I was like, I already know how to do this. I, I, I don't, and 
So I got prepared and I had also, I said, well, I have it this way and I have it that way. What do you want to see? And they were like, both. I was like, okay, perfect. Let's do it. And I showed them what I had. Um, I got direction from Ben, which is an amazing acting, <laughs> that actor's director. And okay. then they they told me, okay, uh, we're going to start with the visa process. But if you don't get it, the visa, if you... <laughs> then um, there's nothing we can do about it. And that's another thing. But, you know, what I want to say here and what is really important is like the platforms, the platforms and the networks, please do, you know, hire the people who are correct for the role, not the most famous, not the most convenient. No, the people who are perfect for the role, no matter what. If you have the money, please invest in your actors. If that's your, yes. because that's the reason why I'm here. And this is my first American show. And this is the first um, opportunity for me. And, but that was because someone said it's her or it's, or it's anyone. It's not, mm -hmm. we don't have another Luna option. And that's what Andy said to me. It was you and you right. only. And that's what we had to stand for. And that's what we had to fight for. And, um, and I mean, there was someone that was willing to, to fight for me. But what, what if they weren't, you know? Right, right. Yeah, right. Like, like, like Luis, he did, you know, he had his Rob Schneider in his back pocket. <laughs> you know, it's, it's no, true. But, 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 Luis had, but Luis had 20 years. You know, right. mm -hmm. it's not easy. Right. Like not every right. time I see an actor and said, it, it's always my respect, my full respect, because mm -hmm. it's so, so hard. And um, probabilities are so low. But mm -hmm. if you have someone that's willing to look for the right person for, for the role, then yeah. even, even convincing Luis, you know, like to, to jump into the show. I right. mean, come on, yeah. if you yeah. want someone, it's gonna cost you, you know. But at the end of the at, at the end of the day, you're gonna see the results on screen. And if right. you want your show to be success, believe me, you can find a an actor underneath the yeah. uh, the stones, you know. So right. So please um, find um, the right one. I'm I'm glad that you said that, and I'm actually gonna start wrapping it up a little bit, but um. But since since you mentioned that, and since we already spoke about how, um, you know, there's there's just all this talk about Latino representation and how it's bad in Hollywood, right? And I told you already, Latinos are a growing population here in the United States, nearly 19%. Um, but it, it doesn't reflect that in Hollywood. So, of course, everybody talks about the problem and the issue, but some of you already spoke on this and spoke about this, but um, if anyone has any other ways that maybe we can look to solving the problem. Yeah. Gabriela just said, we need somebody to fight for us and we also need to fight for ourselves and we need to tell them and prove to them that we are this role. Yeah. So, so thank uh, you for starting that up. Go ahead. I, I want to say something there, Vanessa. It's... <laughs> for the networks and the executives and the directors and the producers out there. Um, it's not just about doing the right thing, you know, and being like inclusive because it's the right thing to do. Forget about that. Just think about the money. Think about how successful you want to be as a network or as a producer. The numbers you were saying, Vanessa, about how many Latins are in the US are correct, but you didn't talk about how much people how, what's the percentage of people consuming television and cinema in the U.S.? Yes, Latin yes, I left that out. But yes, we're the, you know, we're the most, we're the growing, we're the ones that spend all the money. I think, I, I might say something crazy, but I, the last time I read something about that, it was something about the 30, 35%. Yes, market. yes, it was, it was in so the 30s. Just mm -hmm. think about that. You know, like if you want to have that audience there, just let them see themselves in the screen. You know, yes. like just be pragmatic about that. Right. And uh, and you're going to see the success. All the networks know that there's there's a war right now between networks to get audience. But the U.S. is a market that is so um, is, is, is done. You know, like everyone in the U.S. has three or four platforms. The place where the networks are going to grow is in Latin America. Everyone knows that. 
if you want to capture that audience, put mm -hmm. our stories in the screen and put them in the right way. And by that, what I'm saying is like, bring Mexican, Colombian, Argentinian, Latin directors and creators to do the shows. Just not hire the actors, like create, we need to tell our stories, not some guy from Ohio, you know, like it, it doesn't work that way. So I think that's very important to see, you know, like to acknowledge that potential. If you want to think about just the success of your project, I mean, just see the numbers, right? Right, yeah. right. I, I love everything that's being said here and it's so inspiring. And I think that like what Luis was saying about having writers, specific writers for your characters that you want to portray <laughs> is extremely important. And also hiring, like Gabriela was saying, the right people. And I think me as an actor, I think of the responsibility that I have, which I, I couldn't agree more about how heavy it is, but in a good way. Um, when you're an actor of color, when you're on a set, you just have a different kind of responsibility on your shoulders. Yep. And I, I think, and I've learned that that's why people become producers of the shows that they're on as soon as you can negotiate that because you have a voice. Like, it's not the same thing now. Like, I don't have the mm -hmm. same say as a producer than I do as solely an actor in a production. And sometimes, sometimes people do want to do a good job, but they just don't know. So that's when you hire the person that could do the most authentic and like specific job. Um, and I think that, you know, being a producer allows you to hire the people that could do the job because my, I'm limited in my capacity to do, you know, as a Dominican actor, Like Luis was saying, that's a very specific category, but we yes. have a whole spectrum of Latinos, Latinx, you know, um, storytellers from writers to directors to DPs to actors, just the whole, the whole thing. And, and it is a good business. It is a good investment because um, the numbers are there. Yeah, that is true. And to wrap up, Our questions um, would anyone like to give any of our Latino aspiring actors any additional advice I mean everything so far has been gold <laughs> does anybody have any last words that they'd like to share embrace embrace your your culture embrace your accent you know like uh, the conversation with other actors and actresses friends of mine which they've been working in Hollywood for years 10 years ago the whole conversation was like get rid of your accent If you don't get rid of your accent, you're, gonna, you're never going to work here. And you know what? It was true 10 years ago, but now it's different. Like our accent, if they need a Mexican character, now everyone is going to need a Mexican character in the shows and in the movies or a Colombian actor or actress. We have an accent. So just embrace that and, and look for those roles and don't be afraid to show that. If you're able to neutralize your accent and, and, talk like a guy from New York, mm -hmm. that's incredible. But, but that's not uh, essential right now for doing the job. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. I'm glad you said that and it, because it's interesting, right? Because, you know, I'm Colombian-Americana. Marian Lee is Dominicana-Americana. And, and I, maybe you can, you can tell me if it's the same for you, Marian Lee, but I find that the majority of the auditions that I get, they require me to have an accent. There's, there's a lot of that. So when I get one that says no accent required, but she is Latina, I'm like, oh my God, yes, because that's also us, <laughs> you know? So it's really interesting because we're just a whole <laughs> beautiful <laughs> melting pot and, and they need all of us. <laughs> they need to tell and us there's so layers well. to the accent even, because I would say like, yes, you could pronounce a word correctly, but your rhythm might be different. And that's a part of who you are and your culture and how you perceive things and express things. And like, I talk with my hands a lot, you know, like <laughs> it's all a part of your toolbox. And yes, it's great. Like Louise said, to have the skill set of like neutralizing an accent, it's good to have that skill, but it's not the be all and the end all. And like, I think the more we share, I, I'm like, my advice <laughs> would be to listen to Louise because everything he said to me, <laughs> it's just <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Everyone. But you know what, <laughs> I, I think, I think that uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the feedback that I'm getting is just, just be you. Be oh, yeah. the most unique you that you are <laughs> because nobody else is going to be like you. So 
So just be you and don't be afraid or ashamed to be you. Um, yeah, and but, with but, that, also, but also, yeah. but also um, invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, get acting classes. Honestly, like one day it's going to pay off. Because when you have the opportunity, if you're not ready, it doesn't matter if you have the opportunity in front of you. I mean, before saying, oh, yes, I'm going to do this, this callback and I'm going to nail it. I had done, I don't know, I lost the count of how many auditions I did during pandemic. And okay. it's not because they require me. It's because I was training. I had nothing to do. So I was like mm-hmm. locked. And I was like, I'm going to do my acting gym. You know, I'm going to train. I'm going to, I'm going to get my, my, um, and, and, and I have a friend as well who was like, oh, I want to get into the US market. And I was like, yeah, I do too. So shall we start doing, you know, like self fix just because? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it in English. Let's do it. So by the time that the audition got into my, into me, I was like, I've been doing this for two years. Um, I, I'm, I'm trained, you know? Yeah, and, you're uh, ready. <clears throat> I'm ready. I'm ready to give it a you're go. Ready. I'm going to give it a shot. It, it wasn't my, my first self thing. And let's say, I, I, I must say that in Mexico, it wasn't that popular self thing. So I was, I was like, you know, like, you know, if in, in the US they were self taping, I was like, I want to learn how to do that before it was needed in Mexico. Mm-hmm. And next next weekend, I'm going to do, um, I'm going to take an acting course as well mm-hmm. with a Colombian director, you know. Uh, so I keep on training. And at the end of the day, the work does pay off. So invest, please do invest in yourself. Yeah, that's, that, that's uh, absolutely right. Uh, and I know we need to finish this conversation, but I'm, I'm going to be very fast about that because... Okay. Gabby is absolutely right. Um, we were talking about how hard it is to break uh, and to get successful in Mexico or in a different country in Latin America or in Spain or whatever. It's hard. In the U.S., you're playing in the, in the Olympics, you know? So yeah. what I'm saying is uh, every single job I do in the U.S., like the resort right now or Narcos, the last season of Narcos or whatever, it's always a teamwork. Like just, for example, when I did Narcos, I had an acting coach. I had an acting coach who helped me to develop the physicality of a gorilla because my character is, is like a cop. It's like a really tough cop from Ciudad Juarez. Yeah. You know, I was working with that. I needed to gain 20 pounds. So I had a trainer for that. Uh, so it was, what I'm saying is like a teamwork of five or six people helping me to build this character. It's not just wow. being That's like, so oh, I'm going to go to set and suddenly I'm going to be yeah. this cop from Ciudad Juarez. It's or hard work. Exactly. Or now in the resort, the same, like a coach for the accent from Yucatan, a coach for this, a coach for that. You need to invest in that if you want to have a chance to play in the Olympics. You know, that's that's what I'm nice. trying to say. Yes, yes. Because you know what? It's it's not easy. And if it was easy, we wouldn't have a Luis Gerardo Mendez. We wouldn't have a Gabriela Cartol. We wouldn't have a Mariani Tejada. We wouldn't have Luis Guzman. We wouldn't have Penelope Cruz. And the list goes on and on. So it's not easy. We just got to, yeah. you know, work hard, train hard, and um, we got to have someone uh, to fight for us. So with that, I want to thank all of you. You guys are amazing. Thank you for having this little, you know, <laughs> talk with me, um, you know, talking about the, the achievement. No, there was no achievement here. <laughs> um, just talking. So thank you so much, Luis. Thank you so much, Gabriela and Mariani. And uh, with that, I just want to let everybody know that the resort, it premiered on Peacock on July 28th and the season finale released on September 1st. So that was just a few days ago. Everybody yes. talking about the season finale. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it threw me for a loop. I couldn't believe it. But anyway, if you want to find out what I'm talking about, the full season is now available to stream on their platform, Peacock. And then with... Uh, <laughs> We have season two of Peacock's fan favorite mystery drama series, One of Us is Lying. And that returns October 20th, 2022. Yeah, Marianne Lee just got back from New Zealand. So mm-hmm. welcome back. Welcome back to the heat in LA. And mm-hmm. thank you so much to the New York Latino Film Festival. And thank you so much to NBC Universal for having me and having us and allowing us to have real talk about the Latinx experience on screen. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias, Gabriela, Luis, Vanessa, gracias. Gracias. gracias.